What is going on you guys? I hope you're all having an embraceful day. So I decided to redo all the wiring from the Bluetooth controllers because of that blue light that stays on. I don't want that blue light to be constantly on. So we gotta keep it from being hardwired to the battery. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna be wiring it up to a button from the button to a relay, which it's gonna be getting its power from the battery. Now I already have the relay mounted onto the car. These are two relays right here. And the reason I have this is because of the fog lights. When I made my fog lights, I was using the relay in order to hook up the buttons. Two buttons, two relays, two different colors. So right now, since I'm only running one color, one color for the fog lights I'm running only white I'm only using one relay so I have the other relay that I'm able to use in order to connect the halos and the Bluetooth controller so I have everything already ran on the car from the button all the way to the relay the power is coming out of here and the ground as well on both sides so there's not that much that I need to do I just need to unplug all this take it all back back to where the Bluetooth controller power source comes from so from here Probably this one we're going to keep it, but we're going to run it to that. And then this one, we're going to take it off and then run it this way. So I'm going to be using what I have right now. But I will leave a link in the description where you guys can actually pick up a relay and or a button. That way if you guys want to wire up or if you guys have halos or demonized, you guys will be able to wire it up to a switch. So I'll leave a link of those things in the description down below if you guys want to check them out. So first things first, we're going to remove all the wiring from here all the way to where the power source begins from the Bluetooth controllers. So this is what the connectors look like when you buy the relay from the retrofit source. Everything comes pre-wired already, everything, it's mostly all plug and play. But since I don't have any of these connectors lying around, I'm gonna be using the same ones that we used here, which I have a lot of extra ones right there because of my fog lights, but we're gonna be snipping these off and putting the other type of connectors on these. This one, I'm gonna leave it because this one's the same connector that's on my fog lights, but this one, we're gonna be replacing it with the same one that's over here. So we're gonna snip this, the other, either female or male right here, and then connect that to there. We don't need a fuse anymore because the relay already comes with a fuse already on it. When you buy the relay, it's already pre-wired on there. As you guys can see right here, it's right here. So I don't have to worry about the fuse no more since we already have the power, we already have the ground, for both of those, we don't need any more fuses on either one of these wires. So I got the relay hooked up to the power source of the Bluetooth controllers. As you can see right here, I added the connectors and now I just plugged in the positive with the negative. Same thing on the other side and as you guys are able to tell, the controller is off. There's no blue light on there. So if I were to turn on the switch, which is going to be this one right here, it's on. The halo should be on and the Bluetooth as well. As you guys are able to tell, right there's a blue light and the halos are turned on. Now that you guys see this right here, this right here, if you guys are following me on Instagram, you guys would already know what's going on. The problem that I'm having right now is that these should default to white, but I'm having an issue with this. This one's not plugged in right now because I already started unplugging everything since I am going to be taking this headlight back apart since I am replacing this halo. Um, I guess it turns out that this halo was defective and the retrofit source is going to be sending me a new one, which sucks because I was trying to make it out to um, Toyota Fest and then this had to happen. Today is Friday and I placed the order this more no. I placed the order yesterday, but in the afternoon, so I wasn't able, they weren't able to ship it until today, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it or not. Supposedly, I, what I paid for one to two day shipping was like $40, so hopefully I'm able to get it on Saturday. If not, they told me I was going to get here Saturday, 
if not until Monday cuz Sunday all the carriers don't work so if you guys are not following me on Instagram you guys should follow me on Instagram I post a lot of updates on there regarding the build if anything were to happen just like these halos ended up being defective but as you guys are able to tell the button the relay it all works so if I were to hit the button again as you guys are able to tell right here the blue light if I were to hit the button they're gonna shut off buttons off and the blue lights off so we're good so I'm going to start replacing the new halo that I just received in the mail the 110 millimeter halo that I need to replace because of this one being defective so we're gonna be replacing that right now but also I want to update you guys on the demon eye on where I placed it as you guys know I had placed it down here facing up so it was flat looking up but now I put it directly behind the lens. As you can tell, it looks like it's right there. And if you see it from the side, it's the light output is shining straight through the lens. So it's super bright compared to what it was before. You couldn't even tell anything before. So now we're good with the demon eyes and the halo is installed. So now it's time to reassemble everything once again. I think this is like the third time or the fourth time that I've opened these up. So the headlights are completely done. We got the halos redone. Well the 110 millimeter has been replaced and they all work fine. We got the demon eye positioned right now. So we're all completely done with these headlights and I know I told you guys that I was going to be putting one new headlight on the car and leave the old one back on the car but it was just making things a little bit difficult for me with wiring everything this way the way that I just did it right now just uh, installing both headlights. I already have this one that's over here this headlight already all the wiring already ran to the other side so everything is completely done if i would have not done that it would have been such a pain in the ass to get everything done but i installed them both we got them completely done maybe if you guys want to i'll probably do a comparison but i'll just put the other old headlights just on top of them just because so you guys can see the colors of the hids they're both 55 watts but i'm still pretty sure the retrofit source is going to be a lot brighter so the only thing left to do is just install the hids So the way that I'm going to be hooking up my HIDs are going to be with a harness. They do have a standalone, which is how I had my old ones. I bought these in a German website. I don't remember what website it was, but this connects straight to the OEM connector all the way right here. And that's it. You don't have that much wiring. Like the harness will give you a lot more wiring than what that was. Um, so there's... The relay and there's a standalone that you could also use i'm sure i could have got a standalone but when i entered the information on the retrofit source the relay is what popped out for me for my vehicle that is so i decided just to go with the relay it's a little bit different but it should all work the same i also have this i printed out this piece of paper which is how to install them um, i've installed the other ones before but they were um, standalone so you would just connect it to the OEM one. This one I actually have to connect it to a harness which is a little, it's new to me. So I decided just to print out this right here and just go along with what the instructions say. As you guys can tell right here, this means that they're externally wired. My headlights are externally wired. So I would follow this guide. They do have another one that's internally wired depending on your vehicle. What it means by externally wired is if you could access the bulb from the back without unscrewing anything, that means they're externally wired. If you have to unscrew a cap to access the bulb, that means they're internally wired. Just in case, if you guys are installing this and, and you don't know which one, what kind of instructions to go with, just look for that and then it'll have the directions on the retrofit source externally wired. And if you have the other one, it'll be internally wired. So since the harness, you have to install it facing up. And I already have this one right here and you have to install it closest to the battery. There's no other place that I could put it here that would be facing up, well, standing up. But there's this spot that's gonna be right here, which I think I'm gonna be putting it right here. And just screw it onto there. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the capacitor link. This one, it has a label right here as OEM input, as you guys are able to tell right there. And it comes with this little extension, but the picture shows that it stops right here. So I'm gonna unplug this one and then plug in the capacitor link. Give it a good tug, make sure it's not going anywhere. And then this one, the one that was already plugged in there, we're gonna plug it on the other side. Now, this end that comes from the capacitor link, well this one needs to be grounded, but this one is gonna plug into the OEM input from the regular connector that goes on here. As you guys are able to tell right there, that's where that's gonna connect to. Now I already know that there's gonna be an issue 
to line up this connector well this connector to fit on the other connector because I had the same issue with these headlights these headlights were meant for a 2010 I think these are aftermarket headlights but they they were meant for a 2010 Scient headlight and this connector was a lot different than the other one the positive didn't line up with the positive the negative didn't line up with the negative all I had to do was just flip it the other way um, and it would fit fine so I'm thinking I'm gonna have the same issue here since my car is 2007 these headlights are for a 2008 to a 2010 Scient TC so I'm pretty sure we're gonna have the same issue we're just gonna have to flip it around but that's what I'm gonna check right now real quick so this is the OEM connector that's right here the positive is on this side so if I were to connect it like this, see, this little end has to be up, and the negative is on this side, the positive is on this side, so they don't line up. So I'm going to have to flip it around and connect it this way when I'm connecting it. It doesn't click on here, but it'll do for now. If I wanted to, I could change these connectors to a different type of connector, but I mean, it's not really a big of a deal. I can just... Uh, Tape it up here with electrical tape and it'll be fine. It's not going to disconnect or anything like that. So it's not an issue. We just have to flip it around the opposite way. So the ballast connector that's right here. Um, from the, This is from the harness. It connects to the ballast. It doesn't reach all the way in here to where I would want it to. That's where I wanted to put the ballast. But as you guys are able to tell, it only reaches up to here. Um, so the only position that I think I could possibly do is I can remove the crash bar that way I can drill the ballast in through the back through here and it'll fit something else that I could do is I can mount the ballast right here but I need to get this extended a little bit longer which I would be able to do that if I cut the heat wrap the heat shrink that's right here because as you can see able to tell right here there's still a decent amount of wire that I could use and if I were to cut that um, I could stick it I could pull I could pull this wire a little bit more up and use a little bit more and it might be able to reach on the other side. These past couple minutes I've just been cleaning everything up, running the positive and the negative to the battery and just hooking everything up and just making it look nice. As you guys are able to tell over here, since we uh, took off some of the shrink tubing that was right here, it was able to allow this heart, the, the wire that was coming this way to extend. So as you guys are able to tell, it's hooking up right here perfectly fine. So we still need to put the one that goes in here onto the light bulb, but I was just making everything look nice. As you guys are able to tell, everything looks a little bit all cleaned up. We already connected this one. We're just missing the one for the light over here as well. But the ballast is securely put into place. And then we just ran all the wires up through here and through here negative to there and then the positive ran it up all the way up to there the capacitor link is over here so all we need to do is I think I'm gonna put double-sided sticky tape and then just mount it under here and then this one just needs to be plugged in to this one just I just need to make sure that it's gonna be plugged in backwards that way the the red wire is connected to the red wire now we're gonna put together the amp igniter and the harness the one that connects the light to the amp igniter the amp igniter connects to the ballast so we're gonna put this together before we plug it into the ballast so here we go so this one's the amp igniter this one is gonna go straight this one right here is gonna go straight to the ballast and then this one is gonna connect to this one I don't think we're gonna be needing this wire we just need so this hair right here we're just gonna be needing this one that's right here that's what it looks like because this is gonna connect to here and the other one connects to the other side so I don't see why there's a need to keep this wire maybe it's for a different type of application but I don't think it's for mine so I'm just gonna take these out and then this one like I said is gonna go with this one this one is gonna go with this one so then this one the amp igniter is gonna connect to the ballast so now we got everything ran the igniter to the harness the small little harness that's gonna connect to the light bulb we're gonna connect the light bulb onto there and then we'll connect the harness to it and just like that the HIDs are installed. 
So I'm just double checking on this piece of paper the instructions on how I was supposed to install it. I'm just double checking that making sure everything is plugged in how it's supposed to be and we're good to go. So we're going to turn on the HIDs for the first time. I'm so excited just to show you guys. So let's turn these on. Oh, you know what? I'm going to show you guys first and I show myself. I'm going to put you guys right here. Right in the middle. All right, you guys ready, guys? You guys ready? So the reason they didn't turn on, the HIDs didn't turn on, was because of I didn't push this connector tight enough in order for the power to go through. And what I used to figure it out was one of these things, I just connected it to the ground and then just tried seeing if it had power coming out of there, which it didn't, but now it does have power coming out of there. So now, here we go. The moment of truth, now, now they should work. Let's see. So now the issue is that the ballast is not getting any power. I checked the relay right here and this blue one right here, this blue wire, it's supposed to power up when, because this one has pure constant power. This one doesn't and this one doesn't. The red wire, this one doesn't and this blue wire doesn't as well. But when you turn on the lights, this one is supposed to power this one and the blue one which it is not and the reason I say that is because I tested my other relay that's right here and the blue wire and the red wire that's right here they're supposed to come on the red wire comes on but the blue one that's right here doesn't come on I don't know why I don't know what's the issue why it's not coming on and this blue wire is the one that powers the ballast so I don't know what's going on with this relay. Um, I was thinking of just connecting these two wires and making them both power because this red wire does power on with this other red wire whenever I turn on the, the, the lights on. So if I connect this wire with this wire, they should both have power. That's what I'm thinking about doing. So I might do that because I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why this one is not getting any power. So in order to test what I'm saying, I'm, I just got this little red wire and I'm gonna put it in, just try and connect it to that red wire and then this blue wire that way they both get power when the switch for the for the headlights get turned on so I'm gonna go turn it on and now I'm gonna check if the blue wire is getting power which it is as you guys can tell but if I were to remove this red wire look no power on the blue one no power so we have to connect these two these two wires the blue one with the red one um, I'm just gonna make sure make sure this is the ballast connection just make sure there's power coming out of there with that going on and yep look at that power going on through it now I'm just gonna turn it off I'm just gonna make sure that there's no more power coming out of it nope there you go it turned on but it turned right back off perfect so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the exact same thing it's just out here I'm just gonna connect these two wires I'm gonna go buy a connector I'm gonna go check out AutoZone see what I can buy in order to connect these two wires so I'm gonna use these splice connectors that, are, that look like this this is what they're called they look like this so I'm just gonna put both wires in right here and just splice them together easy enough to do that wire in there and this wire in here and then just pinch this middle pin in 
and bam, we're done. Easy as that. So now this ballast should get power when we turn it on. So let's power it on and see, make sure that it's getting power. It's on. I heard the relay click. And now let's test, see if there's power. Power, voila. Good to go. So before we plug in this wire back into the ballast, I made sure that I disconnected it from the, right here, the, the, the HID bulb. I disconnected it. That way I can test this piece right here once we plug it into the ballast. So let's plug in this wire onto the ballast. Okay, that's in. Now let's go back here and we're gonna turn it on again. Whoa, 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 whoa. I heard something. I heard something go. See, I'm gonna try to leave you guys here. I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> now let me just review the field, the footage, see what it was. So I couldn't figure out what it was, but I'm gonna give it another try. I ended up connecting the HID bulb back on so hopefully nothing burns down or anything let me set you guys up we'll turn it on it's on but I hear you guys hear that? I think it's the ballast that's... I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. I mean, the HID turned on, but I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. I mean, my other ballast didn't make noise, so I would think it's not supposed to make noise. I'm thinking it is a ballast. Yeah, it is a ballast. Huh. Hmm. If you guys, if any of you guys know if the ballast is supposed to do that, it has like a small little ring to it. Um, let me know. Let me know if it's supposed to be like that. Because I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. Like I said, I added this little piece that's right here. Maybe it's because of that. But I added it because this wire was not getting any power at all. Which it is supposed to. Um, but it wasn't getting any. So I had to connect it to this red one together. That way it gets power. Hmm. Dang. Got hot real quick it's real hot so it might not be the ballast I put my ear right here and it sounds a lot louder so I'm thinking it might be the the igniter because as you guys can tell it sounds a lot the, the noise sounds a lot louder here so I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now I'm not gonna do the other side yet because I have to do the same thing to the other relay but I only did it to one, just to this side of the headlight. I emailed the retrofit source, and I'm going to see if the amp igniter or the ballast, whatever, whichever thing was making noise, um, if that's supposed to happen. Because if it is, then I'm going to do, I'm going to put the same thing on the other relay. That way they both work and they do the same thing. Um, like, if I were to turn it on right now, it like sounds super loud, but then it like quiets down a little bit. But you can still hear that ring to it. But I don't know. I messaged the retrofit source. Hopefully they get back to me and they let me know. Um, see what's the issue and what's going on. But we're completely done with the HIDs. We just need to figure out that like I said. But I do have these LEDs that I need to install. These are for the turn signal. As you guys can tell this one has an orange bulb in there. And I'm going to be replacing them with these. These are the same thing but just these are LEDs. I'm also going to be installing a new flasher. Because since we are going to be installing LEDs. Um... It's gonna want a hyper blink or hyper flash, whatever you guys want to call it. But that's gonna cause the turn signal to like blink super fast. That's basically what it means. Um, and the only way to fix that is if you install a new flasher. Basically, what it means when it's blinking super fast, that means that 
um, your lights are going out since the LEDs use less power than that orange bulb it's just basically blinking so fast telling you that you need to change your light bulbs um, so we're gonna be installing a flasher as well along with the LED bulbs So now we're going to install the flasher, this new flasher that's right here. All you have to do is remove this panel that goes right here and you'll see the flasher right there. If it focuses, focus right there. That one right there, we got to pull that one out and replace it. So I got the old flasher out. It went right there and now it's out. So now we're going to install the new one. We'll just double check and make sure that they line up the same. As you guys are able to tell there they do they line up perfectly so this new flasher is not going in all the way because of these tabs at the end as you guys are able to tell there's no tabs on this one and this little square piece that's right here lines up with this square piece but these tabs are in the way so I want to chop these off that way the new flasher fits in so the new flasher is in I'm just gonna turn the car on on and then hit the blinkers you can already hear them working Look at that. Perfect speed. And perfect speed. So good. Well, that one's not on because we're not turning. What is going on, you guys? I hope you're all having an embraceful day. So I decided to redo all the wiring from the Bluetooth controllers because of that blue light that stays on. I don't want that blue light to be constantly on. So we got to keep it from being hardwired to the battery. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to be wiring it up to a button from the button to a relay, which it's going to be getting its power from the battery. Now I already have the relay mounted onto the car. These are two relays right here. And the reason I have this is because of the fog lights. When I made my fog lights, I was using the relay in order to hook up the buttons, two buttons, two relays, two different colors. So right now, since I'm only running one color, one color for the fog lights I'm running only white I'm only using one relay so I have the other relay that I'm able to use in order to connect the halos and the Bluetooth controller so I have everything I already ran on the car from the button all the way to the relay the power is coming out of here and the ground as well on both sides so there's not that much that I need to do I just need to unplug all this take it all back back to where the Bluetooth controller power source comes from so from here Probably this one we're going to keep it, but we're going to run it to that. And then this one, we're going to take it off and then run it this way. So I'm going to be using what I have right now. But I will leave a link in the description where you guys can actually pick up a relay and or a button. That way if you guys want to wire up or if you guys have halos or demonized, you guys will be able to wire it up to a switch. So I'll leave a link of those things in the description down below if you guys want to check them out. So first things first, we're going to remove all the wiring from here all the way to where the power source begins from the Bluetooth controllers. What is going on you guys? I hope you're all having an embraceful day. So I decided to redo all the wiring from the Bluetooth controllers because of that blue light that stays on. I don't want that blue light to be constantly on. So we got to keep it from being hardwired to the battery. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to be wiring it up to a button from the button to a relay, which it's going to be getting its power from the battery. Now I already have the relay mounted onto the car. These are two relays right here. And the reason I have this is because of the fog lights. When I made my fog lights, I was using the relay in order to hook up the buttons, two buttons two relays, two different colors. What is going on you guys? I hope you're all having an embraceful day. So I decided to redo all the wiring from the Bluetooth controllers because of that blue light that stays on. I don't want that blue light to be constantly on. So we got to keep it from being hardwired to the battery. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to be wiring it up to a button from the button to a relay, which it's going to be getting its power from the battery. Now I already have the relay mounted onto the car. These are two relays right here. And the reason I have this is because of the fog lights. When I made my fog lights, I was using the relay in order to hook up the buttons, two buttons, two relays, two different colors. So right now, since I'm only running one color, one color for the fog lights I'm running only white I'm only using one relay so I have the other relay that I'm able to use in order to connect the halos and the Bluetooth controller so I have everything I already ran on the car from the button all the way to the relay the power is coming out of here and the ground as well on both sides so there's not that much that I need to do I just need to unplug all this take it all back back to where the Bluetooth controller power source comes from so from here 
probably this one we're gonna keep it but we're gonna run it to that and then this one we're gonna take it off and then run it this way so I'm gonna be using what I have right now but I will leave a link in the description where you guys can actually pick up a relay and or a button that way if you guys want to wire up or if you guys have halos or demonized you guys will be able to wire it up to a switch so i'll leave a link of those things in the description down below if you guys want to check them out so first things first we're going to remove all the wiring from here all the way to where the power source begins from the bluetooth controllers So this is what the connectors look like when you buy the relay from the retrofit source. Everything comes pre-wired already, everything, it's mostly all plug and play. But since I don't have any of these connectors lying around, I'm gonna be using the same ones that we used here, which I have a lot of extra ones right there because of my fog lights, but we're gonna be snipping these off and putting the other type of connectors on these. This one, I'm gonna leave it because this one's the same connector that's on my fog lights, but this one, we're gonna be replacing it with the same one that's over here. So we're gonna snip this, the other, either female or male right here, and then connect that to there. We don't need a fuse anymore because the relay already comes with a fuse already on it. When you buy the relay, it's already pre-wired on there. So as you guys can see right here, it's right here. So I don't have to worry about the fuse no more since we already have the power, we already have the ground, for both of those, we don't need any more fuses on either one of these wires. So I got the relay hooked up to the power source of the Bluetooth controllers. As you can see right here, I added the connectors and now I just plugged in the positive with the negative. Same thing on the other side and as you guys are able to tell, the controller is off. There's no blue light on there. So if I were to turn on the switch, which is going to be 